Let's unbox and talk about BenQ MA Series display to answer one big question. Who did BenQ really create this MA Series for? This is Artist Right. Full disclosure, I am BenQ Global Ambassador for the Pro Display line. BenQ have sent me this MA display for me to do unboxing review and long-term testing. All the opinions you're about to hear regarding the display are solely going to be my own. So the one that BenQ sent me to do this unboxing is the MA270U. This is a 27-inch 4K. There is another model in the lineup as it is filming. It is the MA320U. Now, both of them are 4K resolution. The other one is just 32-inch, and there are two major spec differences between the too. One of them has to do with color gamut coverage. This one can show 95% DCI-P3, whereas the 32-inch one can show 97% DCI-P3. Two more percents on that one. And this one can go up to a max of 400 nits in HDR, whereas the other one can do 600 nit in HDR. Otherwise, they are very similar to each other. They have a built-in speaker. This is really created for any, I would say, more consumer users that are going to want an external display to link up to your Mac. Now, if you are really doing creative work for revenue, meaning that if you're a designer, whether you do it for print or web, CAD CAM animators, if you do any type of video editing, if you do any type of photography workflow for that matter, I would look at BenQ more pro display line and set. That would be either the PD Pro Designer Series, which covers a wide gamut of creative individuals or creative discipline, and also their SW displays, especially for photographers that want hardware calibration or for video editors that really want to get the most accurate color possible with hardware calibration. And for anyone who has an inkjet printer in their studio in their home office who wants to have that 99% Adobe RGB, the SW series is going to be the way to go on that one. But for now, what we're gonna do is let's unbox this and see what comes inside the box. A couple of things about these displays when they ship to you, a lot of times the carrier or even just you yourself or me would just pretty much lift this up using this handle. If you have this handle here, a lot of times the cardboard or the foam inside won't come out. I believe this is more cardboard now, but what you only need to do is kind of push that little smaller tab in and pull this big tab out like so, so it's actually flapping on the outside. And as long as both of those are in that condition, you shouldn't have any problem trying to really open this up. All right, so pulling that tab, opening this from the top. Now the main variation when I open this up compared to a PD or an SW series is that on the top here, it tells you a lot. You can use Display Pilot 2 to link this up. You can have control, it has eye care, it has everything, it has easy connect and you get power. It can sync with MacBook control. But the one thing that I don't really see here is a individual display calibration report. Again, this is in a different series. That's part of the reason why if you're doing work for creative revenue or if you're doing creative work for revenue, I recommend getting the PD or SW. Now going further down into the layer, we have a couple of things. So right at the very top, we have all these cables and this is still kind of like, I would say the traditional packaging. So we have a USB-C cable, we have a HDMI to HDMI cable, and we also have the power cord. They still all come in plastic bags. I technically like more the newer boxing the way how they've done it better by eliminating plastic bags altogether. On this side, we have a little quick start guide and a reference and also this little thing that does the cable organizer. So this must be put in before we screw in the base on the bottom. And like I said, there's no individual calibration report, but what we do get here is a quick start guide, safety instructions, display pilot two, letting you know that there is one of those, there is a QR code and the warranty information. Now, I normally don't look at this, but I'm gonna take a peek at the quick start guide. So this pretty much tells you, you need to put this in before because I made a mistake on another model by not putting it in, they have to unscrew that. And there is just really ways so you can put this together. The overall, I would say industrial design for this particular model are gonna look very similar to their new 5K PD display. That's the PD 2730S. I don't think there's anything else in here. All right, so right in here, we have the arm for the stand with more foam plastic wrapping. Now, environmental factor wise, BenQ have done a good job by eliminating a lot of foam they use in the shipping materials. Now is really mostly like paper. That's really great to see. They're using eco-friendly ink, mercury-free, all those things. So they're really caring about the environment a little bit more. So this 
design wise is very similar to the PD 2730S and I unboxed this before I've actually unboxed this particular uh, MA model. That's why I'm saying it looks very similar. This is BenQ new industrial design, although this is a little bit more silver, a little bit flashier compared to the other one. And what I'm gonna do now is actually just insert this ring in so that we can just do the cable thing. So we can just hold it like that. There we go, it snaps in. And then making a little separate part like this, I think is great because if you break it, it should be easier to get a replacement part. We'll see. Let's see what else. So this is the base. For the most part, the base is very similar to the PD series. This is a little bit less of a wedge. Uh, PD series is a little bit more wedge. It's a little thinner the front. And this one has this compensation. It has this pad here. So you can put your MacBook Pro there. This is really designed for the MacBook Pro to really rest on. So simply enough, what we're gonna do now that we have put in the cable holder thing, what we're gonna do is just link this up. And you can just simply hand tight the screw on the bottom as I'm doing it now. No need to get an extra tool or anything out like that. Just like so, and you should be good to go. All right. I don't think there's any other items in there, so let's bring the display out. A couple things about this. Let's see. So I have to pull the display out of the back first, and they did did not make a perforation for me to kind of just split that and mount the display a little bit easier. So I'm just going to grab this out of the bag. While we're doing that, let's quickly talk about what's on the display. So you have one USB type A connection. This is a 3.2 or 3.1, I believe. You also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. You can kind of see that there. There's a little joystick and a power button. So it's much simpler, and this is the regulation tag for the display itself. Now, everything else, BenQ, have moved towards the back side of the display. So let's go and take a look. So what we have are two HDMI, HDMI 1, HDMI 2, a USB Type-C, a 15 watt USB connector. This is to that you can charge on your device and it has a 90 watt USB type C and this is the one that we will be linking it up to our computer. So simply just slide this in like so and what we're going to do is just snap that in and pretty much it is in place. So we take a look at the industrial design for this MA270U. There's a couple things to note. There's almost no BenQ branding on the back of the display. The only time you're gonna see BenQ is at the very top there, pretty much right where the top of the stand is. Otherwise, you don't really see any BenQ branding on the very front. Let's see, did we see anything? On the very front, it's also very clean, very simple. No BenQ branding as well. And this is using BenQ matted display. There is a light sensor at the very top right there that senses light in the environment. So you can use that with the Display Pilot 2 software to do syncing. And what we're gonna do is let's raise this up and link this up to my 16 inch MacBook Pro and see how this looks. And if we can get Mac color. So give me a moment. I now have this MA270U set up. A couple things that I do want to mention about this during the initial unboxing that I missed is there is a BenQ logo deboss at the very front there in the bottom trim. It's really hard to see and it's pretty much the same color as the bezel. So that's a really nice job minimizing pretty much any logos on this particular model in addition to all the industrial design changes we see on this one. Now, with regards to this MA270U, I think one of the biggest downsides of this would be the resolution that it's still at 4K. I think that if this would have already came out with a 5K display, it would have been a no-brainer. Really great alternative to an Apple 27-inch studio display, especially for any type of consumer out there who wants to get a great display that can show Mac colors, right? Being in 4K, it still works, but I think we're still running into some compromises. Now, when we take a look at the 32-inch model, the MA320U, we're also seeing that that's 4K as well, and that's a larger display size, so the pixel pitch is even lesser than this one. Now with that one, what we really need is a 6K, but I don't really see that many manufacturers out there making 6K panels in a 32 inch size right now. They're starting to come around, but we don't see that many of them yet. So I don't foresee BenQ going that route anytime soon. But anyway, on this one, a big miss would be the resolution, but what about the other aspect of the display otherwise? So I have this link up using the included USB-C cable that's in the box to my 16 inch MacBook Pro. 
And with this one cable, it's providing 90 watts of power to my computers, carrying all the I.O., the display signal and everything. And when I turn this display on initially, the first thing that pops up right away is that I'm default into Mbook color mode. That is BenQ color mode designed specifically to match that of Apple built-in displays on a variety of their computers. Interestingly enough, if I go into the display menu on this, I'm given a brightness change, a volume change, because there are two Trivolo 3 watt speakers built into this display, an input source change, so USB-C, HDMI 1, HDMI 2, and if I want to do anything more than that, turning on HDR, changing the color mode, resolution, well, what I have to do there is download the app DisplayPilot 2. So I have downloaded the app on my computer already, install it and this is giving you a lot more options so you can go and control the audio you can control the color mode the built-in display you can link the brightness up to the BenQ so for instance if I do the link I can dim down the internal display and it will also dim down the BenQ display so it can link together with the two of them so BenQ have done a really good job with this software linking things up you can also dynamically change the resolution for both the MA series and the built-in display there are different modes for example like low blue light auto pivot so the auto pivot thing if I turn the display vertical it can go vertical almost right away because there is a sensor built in that detects that there is desktop partitioning that's kind of like the app that allows you to put a you know snap an app to like one side of the screen and so forth i can turn on hdr there so let's do that display goes blank for a little bit and now hdr is on i can turn hdr off so they've done a pretty good job integrating this display pilot too with the display but on the display menu itself you're limited with regards to options what you can and cannot do with it whereas on the pd and on the sw you can pretty much run those almost independently without downloading the software and still get a lot of controls now what i really like to emphasize on is pretty much the color mode on this display so there are other color modes beyond mbook that we can choose there's display p3 srgb cinema game coding e-paper and user so the color mode overall is a little bit different than what we would get with the sw and pd series part of the reason why is because like i said this is really more of a consumer oriented display if you're doing creative work for revenue i highly recommend looking at the pd or the sw because what this does not get in any of the other color modes is the rigorous calibration, the accu color calibration from the factory that a PD and SW would get. And the other thing too is that this display does not get the uniformity calibration from the factory like the PD and the SW series. So you're not limited to the color mode, but you're limited in terms of the aspect of the color that you're getting. If you're taking a look at this just from the specs in general, they look very similar to each other. The SW, the PD, or just especially with a PD compared to this one. But there are nuances of difference that I'm also going to say that other review channels are probably not going to catch, which is why I'm here telling you this information now. So you can choose all the other ones, but particularly what's interesting about this model is that in Mbook color mode, you can go in and you can choose whether you want to match this to a MacBook or other devices. And the other thing what you can do is you can also choose the manufacturer year of your MacBook because if you have a 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro, the color spectral output for these are gonna be different than for example, a MacBook Air. And every generation, every year, Apple have fine tuned and changed that slightly because of different display manufacturers, different LCD manufacturers and so forth. So you can see there's a whole bunch of different models there that BenQ have modeled so that it's really close. For instance, I have the MacBook Pro M3 Max and this one's going to cover, I believe, both the 14 and 16 inch model. So if I do a side by side here and we take a look, I mean, I would argue that the colors is fairly close to each other when it really comes to this, especially if you're looking at it from the front. The colors are really similar to what you're going to get here. But you can also go in and fine tune this if your display does not show up. Now, if you have an older Mac or something like that, you can still choose a Mac display. You may not get the best representation of the current Mac in the lineup with regard to that. You can change the brightness in here. You can synchronize the brightness to auto monitor, change the contrast sharpness, and also user defined RGB input. So all these things require that you download an app to adjust whereas on the other ones like i said the more pro models the pd and sw you can do that on its own so overall what do i think about this display i think it's pretty good i'll probably run some calibration testing on this but i would say this overall don't expect to see a review for this particular display model because i think i 
share with you enough about what this display can and cannot do already. However, if there's anything else that you'd like to know more about this display, if you really want to see a review of it, do leave them in the comments below. Do let me know. I, If I have enough time, I will circle back and I'll do a dedicated review for this one. But for now, I think this unboxing is covering a lot of information what this MA series can do. And it puts MA series into a positional lineup that gives you a lot more sense when you're considering display from BenQ. So at the very top are going to be the SAB display that can show 99% Adobe RGB and it has hardware calibration. So the two main group of users that would want this if you're a colorist and you want to get the most accurate color possible, with hardware calibration, SW is going to be the case. And if you're a photographer, especially if you have an inkjet printer in studio or in home and you always print on those, you want to see what you're working on in 99% Adobe RGB to get the best color possible. And hardware calibration definitely helps. If you're doing any type of other creative work for revenue, including photography but not printing, if you're just delivering things online or if you're doing just video work in general or any type of creative content like I'm doing now, YouTube, design, CAD CAM animation, a PD series is definitely gonna be the way to go because BenQ have gone in and calibrate all the different color modes, very similar to the SW to make sure that the color consistency is definitely there. Whereas on this one, BenQ spent a lot of time calibrating the Mbook color mode from the factory, but all the other color modes are calibrated, but not as rigorous as the SW or the PD display, nor does it has the accurate color technology in terms of display uniformity and all these other things that we have. So these are just some of the factors to consider when you're really looking at this display lineup. Like I said, if you have any questions or comment, do leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit the bell when you. I'm Art, and I thank you for your time.